Ladies and gentlemen, plus the new undecided category, welcome. This is not the Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Ellen, Jimmy Pronoun Show. You're watching The Right Show Podcast. We do this thing live. If you're listening, click the link below. You can see the images we're about to put on the screen. This is not a typical podcast. This is a support group for normal people. Welcome YouTubers, Facebookers, podcasters, and locals. We discuss the top five rappers of all time. We are going to talk about the little drummer boy like you've never seen before. Joe Biden bumbles his trip to Ireland, and we show four comedy clips and a hidden camera prank disaster date that I went on. It's all happening right here, right now on The Right Show. Leave your comments below. If I see them in time, I put them on the screen. You become a part of the show. Notice Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Ellen, Jimmy Oprah, they don't do that for you. We are ready to do this. Shout out to all my loyal fans and friends from all over the world. We've done 107 episodes. Never missed a week. YouTubers, 380,000 subscribers. Face boogers. Wow, 220,000. Unbelievable. And we have 129,000 now on TikTok. It just keeps getting better and better. Of course, I look a little sleepy. Please, no judgment. It has been a very hard week, okay? But it's about to be a lot of fun. So let's get into this thing right here. Where are you from? Put in the comments. Where are you from? And who is your favorite rapper of all time? I was on a little bit of a uh, argument online. Some hip hop page left the top five rappers of all time. Just posted top five rappers of all time. Number one, Jay-Z. Number two, Nas. Number three, Lil Wayne. Number four, Biggie. And number five, Tupac Westside, baby. And a lot of people were commenting on that. I went in and left a comment and the whole thing blew up. I had hundreds of thousands of people attacking me. Um, they told me I was wrong. I'm so stupid. Who are you? You don't know anything. But I'm a huge fan of rap. So I changed the whole list. And this was predominantly African-Americans who couldn't handle my new list. Tell me if you like it. I said number one best rapper of all time, Eminem. Till I collapse and spill on those raps as long as I get them to the day that I die. If I do not, I'm not Eminem. I put the number two best rapper of all time, also Eminem. Here's why I say that. He's he's had multiple voices in his career. And uh, he started out like angry. I hate my mom. And then he started doing, you know, I can't tell you what it really is. I can only tell you what it feels like. But then he also had other voices and things. So depending which category, is it Eminem or Slim Shady? Both of him. So he's number one and two. Number three best rapper of all time, Tom McDonald. He just came out recently. He's kind of a newer rapper. Maybe five, seven years in the game. Number uh, number four best rapper of all time, Vanilla Ice. Who could forget the way when that song came? Dun, 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 dun. It's like ice, ice. Everyone would jump on the dance floor. It would bring the whole world together. And the number five best rapper of all time, we had to look outside of rap because it's Anthony Kiedis. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, but he is basically a rapper. Where you want to go? What you want to be? Give it away, give it away, give it away now. That is rap. So that's the top five. Tell me if you agree with it. Um, did I miss anybody? But yeah, it's a clean sweep. Uh, top five best rappers of all time all happen to be white. Better luck next time. Okay, someone said, no, not Vanilla Ice, please. Puke, puke, puke. Ice, ice, baby. Jay-Z is known as Mr. Beyonce. Slim Shady. And people are enjoying my uh, my list there. So cool. And look, Red Hot Chili Peppers, definitely um, top rappers out there. All right, moving right along. I am such a fan of music that I was excited to find a brand new artist. I hope you'll all follow this guy. This guy is so talented. He was able to use Siri to make a beat and then play along. And he has no arms and no legs, but he's a drummer. Take a look. Hey, Siri. What's one trillion to the tenth power? One trillion raised to the tenth power is one zero 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 Alright, 
shut up. <laughs> Who doesn't want to see an artist like that overcoming any uh, obstacles and still bringing the beat in a way that could really unite the whole world? So kudos to that gentleman, zero, 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 zero. I gave that, um, not zero stars, I gave that one trillion to the tenth power stars. Zero, 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 zero. All right, we're going to come back with more. I am a lucky guy. A fan brought me a drink while I was on stage, or should I say sent me a drink. Now, the drink came. I go, I didn't order a drink. What is this? I'm trying to do a comedy show. And there's something kind of floating in it when I looked into the light. Turns out, I guess it was a spritz of lime in the tequila, but it looked like a magical powder or a loogie that hadn't quite liquidated. I was scared to drink it at first, but as you know, most frat guys will drink anything and uh, they expect you to as well. Take a look. You know what? We do have something to celebrate. So I, I've been wanting to come to Tampa since I started comedy, 15 years. Five years ago, I told the owner, I go, let me come. He said, we'll see. And then last year, he said, come on a, on Sunday, and if you do well, I'll bring you for a weekend. And we came on Sunday about a year and a half ago, and we sold out the whole night. And so he said, you could have a whole weekend, and we just basically sold out the whole weekend, too. So thank you so much, Tampa. I appreciate you guys. Cheers. What was in that? My God, it it came out. I don't know if you could see that. I spit that out because uh, it, it was just shocking. I was not expecting to drink on stage. I normally don't drink on stage. I think a comedian that has to drink while on stage is not very funny. Like, I got to get drunk so I can face these animals. Not me. I like to be sober and face you animals. Okay. So that was very, um, very interesting to be served a drink on the stage. But I'll play another. I'll, that was part two. I'm going to play part one of what happened with that drink so you can see that too. I'm bringing you to the shows because some of you are living in London and the Middle East and Asia. You're not able to see it. Look at that. If Someone said, was there a worm in your tequila? That's right. And somebody else said, watch out. Kayvon has been getting crazy threats on Facebook all the time. Yeah, that's why I can't really just drink everything put in front of me. Um, you have to be a very, very good looking girl. You have to wink at me and say, drink it, and then I'll fall for it. But don't be coming at me looking like some crazy BLM woke activist saying, take the drink, man. Come on. Have it. I bought it for you. I'm like, no. Go go get a beautiful half black, half French girl to bring me the drink, and we'll talk. Here's how this whole thing started. If someone's trans, that's fine. I don't have to date that person without being shamed. That's what they want to do. You wouldn't even consider dating them, then you're shameful. Oh boy, here we go. What? Thank you so much. Who's this from? Right there? Oh, cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's so nice of you. What is in it? <laughs> is this from the Bill Cosby collection of the drink you have to drink? I don't know if I'll make it to my next show, but let's do it. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Are you a Latina? I knew it. Oh, yeah, I could tell. Because I'm talking about, I'm not in the trance. She's like, take a drink. Let's see what happens. <laughs> After two tequila, then we know for sure what you're all about. You look peachy, cabrón. <laughs> Gracias. Yeah, let me take another sip, actually. Even when I'm drinking on stage, I'm still smarter than Joe Biden. This idiot who's 80 years old, he thinks he's president. He's the resident of the United States uh, White House. He went to Ireland on tax-funded dollars to go look from where he's from. If he wants to go visit his ancestors, we can just wait another year, and he can meet them elsewhere on a free trip. But instead, he's spending money going to Ireland with Hunter Biden, collecting cash, doing nothing, and visiting people. Now, a little kid in Ireland asked him, what's one of the top keys of success? You know, when a little kid, excuse me, sir, what's one of the top keys to success? You say, oh, work hard, believe in yourself, you know, um, have tenacity, show up, you be your best every day. No. You know what he said was the top key for success? We have to make sure nobody has COVID. This guy has a one-track mind. We're not even talking about Covifi anymore. We are talking about keys to success in life. How did you go from being a loser your whole life to president? That's what the kid wanted to know. Oh, the key is no 
Go get rid of COVID. Well, good to see you guys. It's chilly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got you. So very much. Look at this. Air Force One. Right here. He's got a question. Hey, Dad. He's got a question. What's your What's your question? What's the top? Uh, what's the top step to success? What's the top what? Step tips. Uh, you just need to push back here and everyone push up. Success, success, success? Yes. Well, making sure that we don't all have COVID. What, why, what are you talking about? Like, the success. Like, what's the, what's the, what's the key to success? Or, you're, you, you, you just don't like the people I like. Instead of saying, I just didn't get, tell you why, I disagree with you because of the following thing. Because once you question somebody's motive, why they're doing something, because you don't know, in fact, what happens after that, you can never get in a room, you get together. It was all, we always had fights. And one day, I was going into the United States Senate, and Jesse Helms said, was out on the floor of the Senate, and he looked at me and he said, Joe, what would you say if I told you that Jesse Helms in 1970, my dog is doing well, <laughs> his name is Commander. Yeah, well, what's your dog's name? Louie. Louie, oh right. <laughs> anyway, guys. You're supposed to do the rope line, Dad. I'm supposed to do the rope line? Say hi to everybody. All right, well, we'll yeah. guys, thank you, by the way. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. I literally did. I was supposed to. They got me down to a clean lane, and then I couldn't get down to war the operation. We need to put Biden on that Stairmaster to heaven. We need to get that thing going because there were so many things wrong with that clip. The kid asked, what's the top key to success? He goes, we got to get rid of COVID. And Hunter's like, no, dad, dad, daddy, listen, can I have some money for Parmesan cheese? I got to go snort some. But dad, he's asking, what's the key to success? Oh, don't be racist. You know, uh, hate people for not being the same color as you. He's in Ireland. There's a bunch of white people in Ireland. They don't even know about racism. Joe Biden had to go and teach them about racism and say, in America, we got people who hate each other because of the color of their skin. What are we talking about? The other thing Joe Biden did is if you look closely, right when he got there, he started touching children. I mean, he sees a kid and starts stroking the face and smelling their hair. Why? I see kids all the time. They come to my show, my meet and greet. I kind of pretend. I put If their head is here, I put my head over their head like i'm leaning but not even touching you the invisible touch and this guy just wants to touch and stroke the kids take a look one last time it's chilly yeah yeah oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Not chilly. Okay. so what a predator hey are you chilly are you chilly yeah let me rub you yeah. i'm just no the child told me it was chilly so i'm allowed to to help provide heat sick B-A-S-T-A-R. You spell the rest. I don't want to get banned. We'll be right back with a whole lot more of the rest. Let's uh, kind of uh, recalibrate here and cleanse our palate and go over a few tour dates. I would love to see all of you in one of these following cities. Take a look right here and tell me if any of them work for you. Arlington, Virginia. I'm here right now. Next, we have Albany, New York. Johnson City, Tennessee. Hugoton, Kansas, Reno, Chicago, Boca Raton and Naples, Florida, Las Vegas, Nevada, Huntington Beach, Brea, California, Oxnard, and we just added Monterey, San Francisco, and the Austin, Texas, Cap City Comedy Club. So those are the upcoming tour dates. I hope to see you at all of them. Tell your friends. We now talk about Dylan Mulvaney. If you don't know who this person is, you're very lucky. It's a man who recently thought it was a woman, and Bud Light has sponsored this woman, giving her money and a beer can with her face on it, so she, he, it can go around celebrating it. Take a look, try not to bark. I kept hearing about this thing called March Madness, and I thought we were all just having a hectic month, but it turns out it has something to do with sports, and I'm not sure exactly which sport, but either way, it's a cause to celebrate. <laughs> 
This month I celebrated my day 365 of womanhood and Bud Light sent me possibly the best gift ever, a can with my face on it. Wow, well, you're a woman now. If I put dark makeup on my face and say, yo, I'm black and we, we like chicken and wild melon, motherfucker. That's what we be doing. I would be dragged out of my studio, beaten by the black community, shoved, punched, stabbed, shot, never allowed to work again, put in jail, and then have to give a speech on how sorry I was for donning black face and pretending I'm a black man. However, ladies, you know that that is an option and you are letting this man dress like Audrey Hepburn and act like the biggest idiot on earth pretending he's one of you. That's right, ladies. You are not finding this person, shouting him down, saying you are not us. You do not get to just put on pearls and say, it's March Madness. I thought we were having a hectic month, but apparently it has something to do with basketball. You know how us girls are. We're stupid. This is what you're letting the guy do. And most of you support it. Most women say, that's fine. Let everyone live their truth. Well, I don't think it's Dylan Mulvaney. I think if you look close, that is not a real woman. That is Dylan Dick Vaney. Now, why would Bud Light sponsor Dylan? Because the Bud chopped something off. Now he's a little lighter. Bud Light. We have mental health issue Mulvaney, who's pretending to be a woman, but he's always wanted fame his entire life at any cost. So this is the hot topic the trans situation, but before it was, he wanted to be the outgoing, boisterous gay man. And he got a lot of fame on The Price is Right before his transition. Take a look. Dylan Mulvaney, come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. Dylan, how you doing? Oh my God, it's the best day of my life. Welcome to the show, nice to see you. Dylan's a winner! So Hollywood says, if you or someone you know is experiencing mental health issues, put them on The Price is Right. We'll give them free Bud Light. We will entertain them through the night, pay them well, and treat them right. I think it is horrible. It is disgusting. Women, you need to lead the charge on this because I'm already called a bigoted, Islamophobic, xenophobic, sexist, racist, anti-trans for pointing this out. So I have to just sit here and let you do your job. What is the problem with this? Well, men are not supposed to act like that. Tom Cruise, if you'll recall, got in huge trouble merely for jumping on a couch saying he loved a woman. That would be tame today. They'd be like, so what, Tom? Everybody loves women. You got to chop it off and jump on the couch. Then we'll give you a Bud Light deal. Do you guys remember this? There goes poor Tom. Oprah was shocked. Why is this man acting so flamboyant and excited jumping on a couch over a girl? Well, now Dylan's doing it because he became a girl. Tampax has now sponsored him. They're sending this weird looking fraggle rock looking like the karate kid with some mascara on. And he's going to explain to you the benefits of tampies and pads and how they work. Now I'll tell you how tampies work for a guy like Dylan. He should unwrap a couple of them, put them in the hole that's causing him problems, his mouth. And in order to encourage more of this, we have none other than the president, a.k.a. resident, 81-year-old resident of the White House, mentally ill patient sitting across from him and encouraging more and more of this behavior as this man explains to Joe Biden that he needs a tampy. And he is now a woman. And we all have to agree. Tell me if you agree with me, if you think I'm crazy, and put how many different words you think I am in the comments. Uh, start with bigoted, Islamophobic, xenophobic, sexist, racist, anti-transphobe, and try to add some new ones so I can uh, add them to my repertoire. <laughs> 
and this is really funny. Um, we have none other than a guy who tried to steal Amazon packages from a couple. Now, this couple catches the guy in the act, and he tries to take off in his car. Instant karma. Take a look. Yeah, that's done. You're done. You're done. Cops is coming. Cops is coming. Please call the police now. Look, Dan, your wheels are not spinning anywhere. You're, you're caught, you asshole! Did you call? Who's calling? Let's go to your number. I don't know the number. You want me to get you want me to get you a shovel? I get you a shovel. It's front wheel drive. You need to you need to get the other 5244 Churchill Meadows Boulevard. Mississauga. It's front wheel drive. You you need to get the, the wheels on the yeah. ground. The the wheel is not even on the ground. You need to get the wheel on the ground. You need to get the wheels on the ground. The police are coming. Just forget it. Okay, well. No, no mercy. Seriously, he's going to take a sip of water right now? Now, he did end up getting booked and then released right away because they said there's already too many dark people in prison and it's racist just to keep adding them. So they're looking for more white and Asian people to go to jail to kind of help the numbers look more like our country. Uh, has nothing to do with what crime you're doing. It's all about statistics for the radical left. But how helpful was that white guy? Dude, you got to get your wheel on the ground so you can drive away. It's kind of like Owen Wilson. Wow. No, come on. We got to get you out of here before the cops come. Honey, did you call? I don't know the number. Like, so we know that the black man got arrested, but it's because of white snow premacy. The snow stopped him. That snow was acting like a Karen. We'll be back with a whole lot more plus comedy clips. It's time to lighten up the right show. 
I thought this was very interesting. I was on a hidden camera prank date. And obviously, with hidden cameras around, you never know what's going to happen. I thought this was very, very funny. Um, this was, I've done 20 hidden camera prank dates. And MTV approached me and go, they go, this time it's got to be a, with a gay guy. And so I looked at it like this. I'm an actor. I just pranked 17 other women. I didn't plan on dating them. I played different characters. So this will be the first ever gay prank hidden camera date ever done in the world. I was a part of history. And so anyone LGBTQ comes after me, I'm open mind enough to do a prank with you guys before it was considered cool, before Dylan was snipping off the willy whacker. Take a look. Today I'm playing Ben, a sports fanatic from Massachusetts. Did you have any trouble getting here? No, I didn't. Oh, good. Oh, good. good. Omar warned me about you. What did he say about me? Uh, he said, you're very good looking. Oh. He said, you're a charmer, so be careful. <laughs> and you might want to try to take me home at the end of the night. <laughs> I hope he's not a liar. He's, he's not a liar. He's okay, a liar. good, good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm from the I'm from Boston. Really? What part? Yeah, I'm from North Shore. Okay. I don't know if you could tell. But some people say they can hear my accent uh -huh. really well, and other people it's like not noticeable. So, uh, what kind of sports do you like? We love baseball. You know, the Sox. Oh my God, the Red Sox. We go crazy over them. I run a lot. I run eight miles like three times a week. That's not a sport. That's a hobby. There's no pads. You don't gotta hit nothing. If you put on a whole bunch of pads and you go tackle someone. That means you got a lot of anger up in your body. The Pats, when they put on the pads and they just go after each other. Tom Brady, yeah. sick pair of buns on that guy. Many people would agree. Tom Brady, sick pair of buns on that guy. Like to get him a lobster dinner. Hope you enjoyed the disaster date. This was hilarious catching up with the comments. Laughing, laughing. I'm gagging about this one. I would love to see the whole video. This show aired about 10 years ago, and it was one of the top-rated shows on MTV. And guess what? They won't do shows like that anymore because it's too funny, too hilarious. We're mocking people who think they're on actual dates. Now they just do the real housewives and the real house sluts and the real house divorcees. Now, I was given the best intro for a comedy show I've ever had. I did a private event, which if you want to hire me, I'll come to your company party, your birthday party, wedding, anniversary, doesn't matter. But this company... Normally, corporate parties are very boring, very dry. They were like, you come and you do a regular show. We are the waste management. waste. It's called Waste Connections, but they do trash management for, for like 10 states. And they had a corporate meeting and they go, we do trash for a living. Say whatever that you want to look. Oh, yeah. If you might get offended or easily offended, please feel free at this time to maybe go outside. <laughs> no. Get the, get the fuck out. Ah! <laughs> so, please welcome, from Las Vegas, Kayvon. We rehearsed that all afternoon. They nailed it. Come on, that was good. So, ladies and gentlemen, or should I say mostly gentlemen, because normally we have a good mix, but there's about five women here tonight. Three. Oh, there's three? One, two, three. Questioning? Four. <laughs> <laughs> All four! There's 25% more women! This is awesome! Always fun to be able to make people laugh at a corporate event, but that was cool. Uh, if you get offended, please step outside, and, and then here comes the boss. No, if you don't like it, get out. That's how every in intro should be. This clip is now gaining popularity. It's our final clip of The Right Show. I hope you're ready to enjoy it. I did a Vietnamese food shout out. I love Vietnamese soup. This thing has a million views in five days. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There's been one hater. One Vietnamese guy was offended by the joke. Hundreds of Vietnamese women are messaging me. So funny. I do for you. You come have fun with me. I do your nail. All this great stuff. But one guy goes, my culture is not your comedy. Whatever, dude. If you made a funny joke about Persians, I would laugh. You're a beta. You're a leftist. You're a loser. You're the reason comedy can't thrive in communist, socialist, and otherwise leftist societies. So we reject your notion that you have to be that race to find out something fun about that race. I love when Russell Peters makes a joke about Americans or about Persians or about white people or black people. Then I love watching Godfrey, a black guy, make fun of Indian people and Asian people. And I love when I make fun of whatever I want to also take a look. 
Vietnamese, that's my favorite kind of Asian. You know why I like Vietnamese? Because the food is delicious. They have a soup. It's spelled P-H-O. You ever heard of that soup? Yeah. Yep. When I went there, the first time, I go, can I try your pho? The lady's like, it's not pho, it's pho. <laughs> then I realized the name of her restaurant was hilarious. It was good for you. I'm like, damn, that's funny, man. I was like, this is good for me. That's good. So then I started looking for Vietnamese food all around the world. I went to Las Vegas. I kid you not, there's a lady there named Kim Long. So she opened her own restaurant and named it after herself. It's called Pho Kim Long. Accident? I don't know. It's open 24 hours. That's pretty interesting. You can fuck him for breakfast, fuck him for lunch, fuck him for dinner, fuck him long time. Always open. During the pandemic, they shut down a lot of these restaurants. I was like, I have an idea for a Vietnamese restaurant. We'll make it a drive through only Vietnamese restaurant. How cool would that be? drive through only, you take the ingredients, you eat them at home. I already got the name picked out. Go Pho Yourself. Politicians like, you're not essential. Go Pho Yourself. We open. We open. Essential business. If you like that little comedy clip, that's a one hour special. It was released two months ago. It is still on sale. Pick it up on caveoncomedy.com in the shop. And that helps pay for the camera, the lighting, the sound, and all the different people we hired to make that thing happen. But I'm able to give those clips away to the world for free each week. And that is how we are releasing it slowly, feeding the fishies out there and saying, if you like this minute, buy the whole thing. So consider that a tip in the bucket for your favorite comedian, and you know we appreciate when you buy the one-hour special. Now, The Right Show has come to an end. Thank you so much. If you want to leave a super chat, that's a tip in the bucket. YouTubers can do that. Facebookers can leave stars. Stars are like little tips. Or you can go on gofundme.com slash kvoncomedy or Venmo at kvon-kvon. The guy's so nice, they named him twice. You don't like any of those? paypal.me slash tanksgod and you too can support the right show also visit your local podcast subscribers give us five stars and thank you for letting us tell the truth through comedy waking america up with laughter we'll see you next time that's the end of episode 107 of the right show 